All right, everyone. Uh, w- welcome to the third episode of Well, There's Your Problem, which is a, a podcast with slides about engineering disasters. Um, I'm Justin Rosniak. Uh, <laughs> mm. Oh, we're going to do a pronoun check net this time. We didn't do that last time. Just, just, just to annoy people. Also for inclusivity. Uh, my pronouns are he, him. Uh, and I'm my screen names do not eat. I also do YouTube videos as well as this. Uh, uh, yeah, sure. Uh, Liam Anderson, my pronouns are he, him. Uh, I retweet really weird national security Twitter and get in a fight in uh, do not eat's mentions. So... Mm. <laughs> Uh, Alice Caldwell Kelly, uh, she and her, if you please. Uh, I'm Alice Avazandam on Twitter. All right. So, this podcast about engineering disasters, right? But not every disaster is the sudden catastrophe. Uh, some disasters happen slowly over the course of years, and we never really fully comprehend, you know, the full ramifications until, you know, way after uh, the fact. So we're going to talk about the SEPTA regional rail meltdown between about 1979 and 1992. Oh, hell yeah. Hmm. (laughs) I had a thought with this. Originally, having like one where we're not talking about like a column punching through something or something snapping makes me think, oh, well, this one's easy. It doesn't have like a death toll associated with it. No one died because of this. Yeah, people died. And it... it, (laughs) Uh, one person died because of this. Okay, fine. Never mind. But my other thing was a second after that, I realized the collapse of an, an entire passenger rail system and therefore presumably shifting people onto cars in between air pollution and traffic accidents probably killed more people than either of our previous two episodes. Yes. yes. Yeah, pretty much without question. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm. Delightful. L- love a structural factor. So. Anyway, let's uh, let's get into why uh, old timers say SEPTA, you know, the Southeastern Pennsylvania Transportation Authority, uh, actually stands for the Society for the Elimination of Passenger Trains in America. Ooh, got him! <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Roasted. That's such a sad sack poster you've put up there, too. It's like, don't yell at me, I'm trying. They still have those around Philly, and every time really? I see one, I'm just like, guys, come on, man. Like, <laughs> and I, I'll be I'll be like on Facebook or on Twitter defending SEPTA, and I'm just like, man, what am I doing? Like, I fucking hate taking SEPTA. <laughs> You're being a SEPTA reply guy. That's cool. All right, so... Uh, let's do some background. There's these two railroads, right? We have the Pennsylvania Railroad and the Philadelphia and Reading Railroad, right? They ran commuter trains into Philadelphia, you know, as well as doing a lot of other railroad shit, you know, freight, long-distance passenger trains. Uh, and they had two separate railroad terminals. The Pennsylvania Railroad had Suburban Station, which was underground underneath this office building. And then the Reading uh, Company had... Uh, Reading Terminal, which was, you know, an above-ground terminal behind this big uh, head house, right? So they're both mostly electrified. Uh, they have the same electrical system powering both commuter rail systems. Uh, and, you know, they're, but they're two separate systems, like completely separate. Until uh, 1968, the Pennsylvania Railroad goes bust. It becomes Penn Central. And then Penn Central goes bust in 1976 in the largest bankruptcy in the history of the world until Enron. And both these companies in the fallout are reorganized into a company called Conrail, which is a sort of quasi-nationalized freight railroad, which at this point, it does not, uh, it doesn't do passenger service anymore, except for commuter rail in certain cities. Okay. Mm. So, so very, very much like uh, rail track in the UK after privatization, where we just had all of the freight stuff and all of the infrastructure just siloed off. Yeah. Awesome. Also, the logo got worse every time. 
Yeah, I was going to say, it went from, uh, you know, it, it went to Penn Central's loco, sometimes called the mating worms. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it makes me think of with the font, too? It's it, I, I feel like it's live a better life on the off-world colonies. <laughs> it's very Wayland yutani Yeah, I when I see the Conrail logo, I always think of, uh, of UAC from Doom, and I'm just like, I'm just waiting mm. for Conrail to open a portal to hell. Yeah, it's a portal to hell, but it's stored inside one freight car, nobody knows why. No one knows which just one it is. Back at, just sitting back yeah. in the yard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't go with that one. That's, that's not the good one. Yeah. <laughs> so, the history's a little complicated here, uh... In 1974, all inner-city passenger rail service, except for a few outliers, was folded into M-Track, right, as it is today. Uh, but some freight railroads, they're still responsible for running commuter rail, including Conrail, right? And the Southern, right? Because the Southern, or am I wrong? No, the, yeah, the Southern the Southern Railway still operated the Crescent. There were a couple others, there's weird ones, especially the Georgia Railroad in Bank was the weirdest one, because they essentially the state of Georgia allowed them to run an unregulated bank as long as they provided <laughs> passenger rail. Um, I'm sure this was fine. Like that, that is, that is a hell of a story. I don't think we can fit it in here. Um, so in 1982, Conrail's relieved of its commuter rail obligations, which, you know, the, it, it's losing a lot of money. So they're pretty happy to stop running them. Right. So, municipalities had to pick up the slack and fund these commuter rail services if they wanted to, right? So some cities like uh, Cleveland immediately discontinued all commuter rail, right? Then Pittsburgh and Detroit, they set up agencies which um, funded commuter rail for a while, and then those fell apart as well after a while. In Philadelphia, we formed SEPTA a few years earlier uh, to, you know, handle the public transportation within the city limits, but uh, now it was funding the commuter rail, too. And essentially, they're just giving money over to Conrail to operate trains that have the SEPTA logo on them, right? And we have a mix of electric commuter rail and diesel sort of quasi-inner city trains, right? So, you mm. know, they went... Well, that, that That's a, a load-bearing logo, though, so that is important. That, that is important. I mean, this is a EMDF unit, right? And, you know, it has this nice-looking uh, nose on it, right? Uh, mm. That's all made of Bondo. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just that little... Uh, the, the chevrons that they ripped off from British Rail, just holding it together. Yes. I'm sorry for my parochialism here. I'm just going to make everything about British uh, railways, because that's the only kind I, I know about. It, it, I mean, it is relevant, so... In the So, uh, to give a little bit of context, too, so back uh, into... 1958, the city of Philadelphia enacted the Philadelphia Passenger Service Improvement Corporation, uh, which was essentially a subsidization plan for both the Reading and the PRR to subsidize service on both Chestnut Hill branches, uh, which didn't really help. And then they continued to subsidize them uh, into 1970, and then Reading filed for bankruptcy in 1971. That's yeah, such a municipal and... thing. Is this volcano is going off? How do we stop it? Well, we keep Throw shoveling money, money into, into it. it. Yes. But yeah. as a result, the uh, the Reading and the Pennsylvania sides of the commuter rail system were using very similar equipment, which helped us out in a moment. Uh, so, this guy is Vukin Vucic, right? Who is a professor of transportation systems at the University of Pennsylvania, still is now. And he had an idea, right? So the idea was, rather than have the Pennsylvania and Reading sides of the commuter system, which are uh, the red and blue lines on this diagram, respectively, uh, go into two separate terminals, they would go into one tunnel that ran underneath Center City. And then, you know, so the train would pass from one side of the network onto the other. It would transform from... Reading train to a Pennsylvania train, or vice versa, right? Mm. This is a this was an old idea, but Vucic uh, sort of built on this by saying we're going to run this like uh, the S-Bahn in Germany, right? But that seems reasonable. People like the S-Bahn. It's not duplicating a bunch of stuff. I've 
only use the one in Munich, but it's very nice, and they run like they they run like a train every ninety seconds through a two track tunnel. It's incredible. I I think that's the mistake there is whenever anyone in America or Britain for that matter tries to do like a European technocratic solution to anything it's always premised on the idea that this is going to be a country where stuff works and we aren't <laughs> uh, just for context for viewers who may not know what the s-bahn is think of it like uh it's sort of like a regional subway system right it and this is what they wanted to do with the septa regional rail system they were already most of the way there um it would be all electric, it would be high frequency, high speed operation, right? They already had the equipment to make it work. Um, they were going to sort of phase in operations, unlike the S-Bahn, where they call the trains S1, S2, S3. Here in Philadelphia, it'd be R1, R2, R3, R's for regional. Um, and then they were going to add one new line going to the airport, uh, which would unbalance the two systems. So they also wanted to, in addition to building the tunnel, they wanted to switch one of the Pennsylvania Railroad lines over to the Reading side by building something called the Swamp Poodle Connection. <laughs> <laughs> I beg your pardon? It's, it, it's in a neighborhood called Swamp Poodle. Okay. <laughs> Fine. It sounds like an airport novel. Uh... <laughs> the Swamp Poodle Connection. <laughs> Thank God in England, there's no crazed names or anything. No, ab absolutely not. Whatever. No. Roman conquest. You, you, you didn't learn <laughs> any of this from us. There isn't a town anywhere in England called Fingering Ho. It's fine. <laughs> so, they get the hard part done, which is the tunnel. They start building that in 1978. It's finished in 1984. Uh, the Swamp Poodle Connection, which involves laying like a quarter mile of track, never gets done. Um... So, as these grand plans were being initiated, right, a lot of the network started to fall apart. So, we had county subsidies for SEPTA's quasi-inner city service, right? That was the stuff that went out to Reading. It went out to Quakertown in Bethlehem. It went out to Allentown. It went to Newark, New Jersey. Um, these, the subsidies started to fall apart, and the political support started to disappear. So... Between 1979 and 1986, of the 481 route miles that formed the regional rail network, 201 of them were cut. So in 1979, we get rid of the train to Allentown. Uh, that was the first to go. And in 1981 was the bad year. They cut the Pottsville train, which is up here. They cut the Newark, New Jersey train. Some of the New Jersey transit lines that also went into Philadelphia were cut. Those were to Ocean City and Cape May. Uh, those aren't on this map. You had your own sort of beaching axe. You just closed a bunch of the... Like, were these less profitable, the um, sort of quasi-long-distance ones? They, they were less profitable. They had old equipment. The ridership wasn't so great because the equipment was old. Um, and the one we're going to focus on in a bit is this cut line here from Fox Chase to Newtown, um, which I believe was also cut in 1981. And in 1986, they started cutting back some of the electric lines, which was stupid and incredible. Um, so after 1981, there's no diesel service, which makes implementing Vucic's vision a little easier. And in 1982, Conrail is relieved of its obligation to run commuter trains, so SEPTA be completely in charge, right? So the plan is bring the center city tunnel online, add a bunch of train frequency, add a bunch of service improvements that'd be better customer experience that convert this system into the finest regional rail system in the United States. Hmm. And also... What a nice utopian vision. And also, they were going to bust the unions. <laughs> so, Side note here. Yes. Let's, <laughs> uh, let's introduce the players here, right? Uh, so this is David Gunn, right? He was later president of the MTA in New York and also Amtrak. Uh, and then these two guys, that, that's Joe Biden. Uh, and that's Senator Tom Carper. They're, they're not as important. I just could only find a picture that also included them. Uh, so at this time, David Gunn is SEPTA chief operating officer uh, while they're transitioning from Conrail operation to SEPTA operations. Uh, this is 1983. And there's three relevant unions here. There's the United Transportation Union, 
little redundant, um, which is uh, represents the conductors. You know, they collect the tickets, right? There's the Brotherhood of Locomotive Engineers and Trainmen, who represent the locomotive engineers. And then there is the Transport Workers Union, right? They represent city transit. That's buses, trolleys, subways, elevated rail, trackless trolleys, so on and so forth. Okay, hmm. so SEPTA, under David Gunn's leadership, issues an ultimatum to the Conrail-employed UTU-represented conductors. He said, we're only hiring 150 of you guys back out of 400-odd uh, conductors, right? This is because they wanted to, instead of hiring conductors with union benefits to collect fares, they wanted to hire part-time passenger attendants, right, who'd be collecting the fares. And they uh, also tried to reduce people's pay otherwise. They also hmm. told the uh, engineers who were represented by the BLET uh, they would be reducing their pay to the same pay that subway operators got, right? Since they figured, okay, since we're doing rapid transit style operation, you guys should only be paid like you're making, like you're running rapid tra rapid transit style trains, right? Now, the average pay for the city transit division right now was uh, nine twenty five an hour. Not, not very good. It's also that, worth noting that uh, on the Fox Chase line, uh, they used for whatever reason city we're, transit. We're getting, we're getting to that. Instead, okay, okay. <laughs> I sorry. Yeah, we're getting to that. I, like, I have one. I have one thing slide. first. Yeah, I'm sorry. but before before we get to the next slide, um, I have a crazy idea. What if instead of having three different trade unions who each sort of jealously guard their trade privileges and can be played off against each other, you had like one big union that could like possibly resist these kind of ultimatums? Nope. Imp nope. Impossible. No, no more unions nope. is better. Nope. There's about twelve more unions uh, involved here. I, in I see. That's that, that's a good point. If 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 you, if you do have one union, then you only have one union. That's less union. Yes. Yes, it's like high strength steel. Everyone... Like the, the 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 more unions you have, <laughs> the 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 less strong they Consider are. Consider, and if that's good. Everyone was a union of one person. Hmm, that would be the strongest union. <laughs> Solidarity forever. <laughs> so, all right. So at the end of 1982, regional rail passengers are told. There's going to be two weeks of no regional rail service while the SEPTA transitions to rapid transit-style operation. So, uh... I love to take two weeks off work to transition. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the game begins, right? Okay, so we got to go one year back here. SEPTA needed to score some political victories to get their concessions, and that meant pitting unions against each other, right? So... In 1981, Conrail discontinued service on the Newtown line past Fox Chase. Uh, that was where the electric wire ended, right? And then later that same year, SEPTA reinstituted the service as the Fox Chase Rapid Transit Line, right? And they used... Monorail, monorail, monorail. Yes. <laughs> Mo monorail, except the equipment was ancient and broken, right? They used mm. 19 derelict Bud RDCs that's this, this train yeah. right here, right? <laughs> and rather than hire Conrail engineers to do the job, uh, they used city transit personnel who were represented by the Transit Workers Union as opposed to railroad personnel, right? Uh, so, you know, they were running the line a little cheaper. And by the way, they had 19 RDCs. They only needed two to run the service. This worked sort of, right? at least to pit the unions against each other. The very first Fox Chase Rapid Transit train never left the station. There was a Conrail employee picket line which prevented it from leaving, right? Uh, SEPTA had the picketers arrested and the second train left 30 minutes late. Uh, that sounds like SEPTA. Now the mm -hmm. idea was if you were taking the uh, city transit operated Fox Chase Rapid Transit line, you would make a transfer at Fox Chase, which is this highly pixelated station here um, you know to get all the way into Center City so if there was any excuse to make that connection not work 
Conrail employees would take it. You know, a lot of times they would just leave the station as the RDC trundled into view, right? And then you're, like, stuck there for 30 minutes waiting for the next train. Um, furthermore, the Brotherhood of Locomotive Engineers and Trainmen and UTU pointed out there were some serious safety issues with these RDCs. They ran them in one-car trains, and these one-car trains were not heavy enough to trigger the grade crossing uh, gates, right? Oh, oh now we're getting closer to it. Oh. So, that was, that was accident right there. Okay, so. This was the 80s picture I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, as I said, these, these cars were in very bad condition. There's no air conditioning. They required really frequent oil changes. They were essentially servicing them on the platform in front of passengers. They had no experienced personnel who knew how to maintain the diesel engines on them. Conrail employees refused to help service them. Uh, they knew what to do. They just, they're, they're not going to do it, this is, right? This is literally the, um, I, I know we kind of belabor the point about how a lot of American history is just the Soviet Union, but worse and expensive. But this is a joke in Chernobyl about a machine that consumes 400 tons of diesel an hour to cut an apple into three pieces. <laughs> <laughs> so, And it was designed to cut it into four pieces, is the punchline. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, on January 2nd, 1982, just as the Conrail unions had predicted, one fateful day, the gates did not come down and a train plowed into a vehicle on the grade crossing, right? Who could have seen that coming? Mm. It just happened to be a loaded tanker truck. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. Of course it did. Yeah. So the resulting explosion killed the motorman and created a plume of smoke that was just visible in the air for miles around. Uh, the National Transportation Safety Board stepped in and made SEPTA run two car trains that actually triggered the grade crossings, right? They only needed two car. They needed two train sets in total to run full service on this line, and they had nineteen RDCs. Right? Hmm. Uh, where did they? Where the hell did they get these from? I, did they just have them lying around? I believe they basically just had them lying around. There's a lot of RDCs just left over there. You just yeah. You just literally go in the back of the shop, and you just have this like uh, hideous like fucking thing that is also very light for some reason. Well, these they were just left over from Reddick, right? Yes, or the Reddick, I should say. Yeah. Well, these cars were so shot to hell that all 19 of them were out of service by the end of the next year, and they had to shut down the line. <laughs> well, at, at least nobody else exploded. Yes. Which is the most you can ask for. All right, so we're going to fast forward to a few <laughs> days before uh, New Year's Day 1983, right? Mm. So To this photo of a DSA meeting last week. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so SEPTA it has made the riders pretty angry by saying they're going to be out for two weeks to upgrade service, right? And the, the United Transportation Union and the Brotherhood of Locomotive Engineers and Trainmen called their bluff. They offered to continue running existing service until a real contract is agreed to, right? The commuters, you know, they're obviously in support of the Conrail unions at this point, UTU and BLET, because they want their trains, right? You know, got to get to fucking work. This averts the two-week shutdown. But, uh, you know, there's reduced train service for a while because they weren't expecting to run the trains. Now, the city transit union, TWU, is also pissed at SEPTA. Uh, their, guys have been running, uh, their guys have been running the Fox Chase Rapid Transit line, and they'd been making a lot of money because they had to travel out so far, right? And uh, SEPTA discontinued that service in January 14th of 1983, uh, which meant their guys are out a lot of money. So, they're all expecting, all three unions are expecting to strike on March 15th, 1983, right? But a few hours before the deadline, SEPTA settles only with the Transport Workers Union. I mean, just the incompetence of getting all of them mad at you at the same time. Like, we saw the, we saw the idea of them trying to play them off against each other, and they fucked it up. Still, oh, that's incredible. No, 
because they settled only with transport workers union. Oh, no, no, I, so, I, I, I get that. But I mean, how did they let it get that far that they had that for that brief shining moment, they had accidentally driven three distinct trade unions into class solidarity? <laughs> <laughs> all this after. All this mm-hmm. after. So uh, at this point, you know, TWU decides, all right, we're not going to go st- go on strike. But the UTU and the BLET and 10 other unions representing former Conrail employees decide to strike regardless. They strike for 108 days. Wow. Hell yeah, buddy. When you say 10 different unions, I'm just picturing like the kind of highly specific kind of trade union that we ended up in Britain before Thatcher, where it's like the International Brotherhood of the guy who pushes the thing <laughs> and the International Brotherhood of the other guy who turns the thing. Uh, pretty much, yeah. I mean, some of these unions have as little as ten guys in them. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that, that's fine, though, because that's as many people as you need to turn the thing, and they have a distinct interest. <laughs> more unions is more gooder. Yes. Mm. So, um, all these 12 unions are on strike because they want pay increases instead of the reductions that SEPTA wants to give them. They want railroad employees to do railroad jobs, and of course they all want to keep their jobs, right? Yeah, they want to do things that are more better instead of becoming a weird European rapid transit S-Bahn thing. Yes. So, with city transit operating, the strike is kind of neutered, right? Because a lot of SEPTA regional rail lines end within the city limits. So, you know, you just take the bus. Um, so we wind up in a situation where the strike goes on for a long time. Not all of the union's demands are met uh, because it hasn't hurting as bad as it could have been. Um, but crew sizes and pay scales remain comparable to Conrail pay and crewing at the end of it. A rapid transit operation doesn't happen. Instead, we have the same low-frequency trains as before. Uh SEPTA wins the right to shift employees between the former Reading side and the Pennsylvania Railroad side, which they didn't have before. There's staffing regulations across crafts that are relaxed, and then because of the 108 days of no regional rail, ridership drops significantly, and it doesn't recover to its previous levels until 2008. Good God. No no one really wins. <laughs> that That's the best you can say for a any kind of a trade union, I feel like sometimes is, it's better than nothing, mm-hmm. maybe. Like they they didn't <laughs> get their like fully automated, uh, like waxed to a high sheen S bahn fantasy. So that's something. Yeah. <laughs> so and uh, just a disclaimer: this is actually a picture of a SEPTA strike from a few years before. I couldn't find a picture of the 1983 strike. Which is weird because they had a strike every like year and a half. Yes, right? they were they went on strike very frequently. Mm, very serious. The next year, the Center City Tunnel opens, um, and this is a monster of a piece of infrastructure. Right, this is a four track tunnel through the middle of a major city. Uh, it has a new line to the airport. If you had modern signaling, you could easily fit sixty trains an hour through this tunnel each way. Um, but Instead, we run 16 trains per hour at peak hours through this tunnel, and usually about six trains an hour. Um, the trains aren't frequent enough for reliable transfers, and ultimately we've, we've, we've invested a lot of money into a system which doesn't necessarily benefit commuters uh, that much more than, you know, just having Reading Terminal and Suburban Station uh, as two separate stations. Yes, but you can't not do a, like gr- a grand plan to improve your city's infrastructure. Yeah, look at like, it. I mean, yeah. <laughs> look you, how you, big you, it is. <laughs> you can't not have a ridiculous sort of vainglorious idea and and expect people to like leave well enough alone. No, you have to do this thing. Otherwise, where else are you going to fu- stick the you know hundreds of millions of dollars? I- I have to flush my hundred dollar bills somewhere. Exactly. Yeah. Well, maybe we could have like uh, maybe we could have like not done the union busting part. Uh, mm. so, <laughs> that, that's good. Union busting, good. It, it, we, maybe, maybe we could have dad. both and not either or. Yeah, 
No, sure. I mean, that, that, that's, that's the thing, though, is we have to, like, lay this squarely at all of the Union's doors. It's entirely their fault that you have this dismal, low-frequency operation, rather than trying to do this, like, gigantic restructuring and also bust the Union's at the same time. Uh, yes. So, well, while I built this tunnel, everything else was falling apart. This is the, uh, the viaduct that used to run into Reading Terminal, right? Um, mm-hmm. And they were just, while they were building this big expensive tunnel, they were deferring maintenance everywhere else. Uh, four, four days after the tunnel opened, the bridge at Columbia Avenue, which is now Cecil B. Moore Avenue, uh, was found to be unsafe and had to shut down the whole system. Um, because that was all four tracks leading into the tunnel had to be taken out of service while they fixed the bridge, right? Uh, they installed temporary fixes in about a month. Then later, 1986, they uh, have to take out the uh, lines to Ivy Ridge and Westchester because the track had decayed so badly. Uh, neither of those have been restored since. Um, and in 1992, someone decided maybe we should take a look at those temporary fixes we put in at Columbia Avenue and uh, notice that the bridge was visibly sagging as trains went over it. <laughs> oh yeah, imminent so, danger of collapsing. Yeah. G- question: yeah. To what extent is this sort of being encouraged? What to what extent is this planned neglect, and to what extent is it just incompetence? That's it, it's it's debatable, right? Because um, mm-hmm. you would expect th- this is probably the most in- one of the most important pieces of infrastructure in the system. I mean, there were people who suspected, like, SEPTA just wanted to get rid of regional rail if they couldn't run it like mm-hmm. rapid transit, right? Well, like, I, I, I get that with the outlying lines, because they're a drain, you can just be like, well, whatever, and you just leave them to decay to the point where you say, uh, this is no longer viable. I, I just don't know whether it's um, institutionally cynical enough to be like, yeah, we'll just have this bridge that just sort of is made out of, like, old biscuits or whatever, and just dips. <laughs> Uh, there's also the issue, uh, if I can just speak for a second, that SEPTA is organized in a baffling way, that hmm. it's not organized as a state uh, or a federal or even like a city agency. It's a five county agency. Uh, and the four counties surrounding Philadelphia are traditionally Republican counties, and they're not big fans uh, of SEPTA. Uh, and have made themselves known in that, uh, in that, like when SEPTA tries to build new projects, they're all just like, "Meh." But the black people commuting to work are scaring me, mm. uh, and I think that does contribute to like the just sheer nonsenseness, if you will. Yes. Also, for whatever reason, the uh, the four counties other than Philadelphia provide the vast majority of the funding. I think the city pitches in like a couple percent of the budget at most. <laughs> yeah, it's like I know for the uh, for the the Center City connection, it was like three point three percent that wow. the city of Philadelphia pitched in. So, nineteen ninety two, they find this bridge is completely unsafe, um, and they have to hastily put together a project called Railworks. Right. Um, so <laughs> this was a ten month shutdown of the entire Reading side of the system. They have to build an emergency station, which we now know as Fern Rock Transportation Center which lets regional rail passengers transfer to the subway, and they have to build new tracks in the subway to add additional express subway service, right? Um, They bring back diesel trains for a brief period of time, which they run over a handful of Conrail branch lines they just, you know, stabilized and put together at the last second so that they could get folks into 30th Street Station. Um, American Paces. Amazing. Oh no, the Pacers are coming soon. Uh, oh, okay. Th- this was a big. This these were big diesel locomotives that New Jersey Transit was retiring. And uh, I it was see. Like, Can we it's, borrow it's, those it's, for a second? <laughs> it's just you, you say sort of leftover diesel to run outlying lines as a patch over something, and I think Pacer. Yeah. So, they rebuild uh, a, two stations as a part of this. Uh, the Columbia Avenue station, which is now Temple University Station, you know they build a nice, Ooh. they build a nice, you know, two platform, high level platform station. It's much nicer than what it was before because that serves, you know, Temple University, 
and then North Broad Station is downgraded to a patch of asphalt next to the tracks. That's so depressing. <laughs> yeah. So, and of course, in the meantime, regional rail isn't the only part of the system that's getting the shaft. Uh, SEPTA started temporarily suspending trolley routes all across the city, including ones that had like, you know, sort of quasi dedicated lanes and high quality infrastructure. Um, th- a lot of those were temporarily suspended in 1992. Um, and well, it's a very long temporary suspension cause they haven't come back yet. Um, any day now. Yes. <laughs> Any day now. I'm just waiting for the right time. Yeah. So uh, they finished the project, and, you know, here we are today. Uh, since 1979, you know, when we lost 201 root miles, have we clawed anything back? Uh, no. There's There's been zero improvements in the number of root miles. There's been slight improvements in train frequency, but there's there's been... You know, there, there, there's been no investment whatsoever. In 2013, we nearly lost another half of the system because the Pennsylvania State Legislature didn't want to provide SEPTA with any, any funding for, you know, emergency repairs to infrastructure that were required, right? So, you see, this, mm. is, this is the current system. This is what almost happened in 2013. I mean, this is sort of... I want to lay this at the door of uh, the American system of basing all of your state legislature and government in a city that is not the largest city in the state, and just having it be in, what, Harrisburg? Harrisburg, yes. Uh, Yep. Mm. Delightful. So this this does not affect you at all if you're a Pennsylvania legislator. Basically, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Now, next year, we may get three miles back. Um... They're going to extend the service from Elwyn to Wawa. So we'll only have lost 198 miles. But ultimately, where we could have had, you know, this nice rapid regional rapid transit system, we, we, we got more of the same. And, you know, everyone sort of lost because, you know, SEPTA wanted to do union busting. Mm. And, and and the guy who, who ran that ended up being president of Amtrak, you said? Yes. And, you know, the, the, the regional rail service isn't even that fast, right? Um, God, after no. after, uh, after they installed that emergency station at Fern Rock, right, if you take Fern Rock to center, if you take the subway from Fern Rock to Center City, it takes 17 minutes. It costs $2, right? If you take regional rail, it takes 16 minutes, but it costs twice hmm. as much. That's a, that's a high tax on liking trains that go above ground. It's ultimately, like, the difference between regional rail and city transit fares is because regional rail is supposed to be for suburbanites, while, you know, city transit is for the rest of us. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, c- city transit runs the buses, too, right? Yes. And the theoretical yes. trolleys. Yes. We have trolleys. Yeah. Okay, but also also the ones that are in a state of like uh, uh, long term hiatus. The, the reunion show is coming, damn it! <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like the king in the mountain Un- under a giant hill outside of Philadelphia is a buried trolley. <laughs> it's waiting for its chance. Yes, so somewhere deep in the trolley tunnel, at a little spur by City Hall station, and no one knows what it's for. <laughs> uh, anyway, that's. You know what happened? We have all the infrastructure in place to run a lot more trains. We just choose not to. Um, hmm. You know, it's it's basically it's. It, it, why is there no there there? Everything's in place. They could just do it. They're not going to do it. It's frustrating. No. But and one person died um, from being exploded. Yes. So you know that's that that's a fun little sort of reminder is yeah. even these really small collapses they have like these huge institutional com- uh, uh, consequences and also someone explodes yes but i would be remiss to not mention the american pacer Ooh, oh sexy. hell yeah buddy <laughs> I, have, I have seen this car with my own two eyes <laughs> mm. it's now at the connecticut trolley museum uh, in Windsor Locks, or across the river from Windsor Locks. So in 1985, there's a brief attempt to start service to Newtown again. They want to try, because Newtown Rapid Transit worked with light vehicles so well the first time, 
Yes. SEPTA decides... Uh, it only exploded once. It only exploded once, yeah. <laughs> so SEPTA decided, all right, um, these RDCs are worn out. What if we contact British Leyland? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. And get a, get a rail bus Bri- from them. Poor, poor British Leyland. It's just a guy in a sweater vest <laughs> sitting by a phone waiting for it to ring. And then after six years, it does. And it's a guy like, would you sell us it? Yes. Yes, it's I will sell you a tied. rail bus. It's finally tied. <laughs> it's all coming up, Millhouse. <laughs> so so they, they buy a pacer. This is actually mm. a prototype pacer, right? I think by this yeah, time less... pacers were in service, so this was like oh, one yeah. of the prototypes. And I mean, pa- pacers were in service what eighty one to now, so yeah. yeah. And 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 a pacer is, for the record, a literally it's a bus chassis that they have put on a train car because it's very cheap and it runs on diesel and it, it's noisy and it's terrible. You can't get into it if you use a wheelchair, but we still use them on a bunch of. Uh, regional British rail lines because basically we can't figure out anything else. So this thing is shipped over from Britain, right? Uh, They put it on the tracks at Fox Chase and they do a test run from Fox Chase to Newtown. It comes back and they never do it again. Um... (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's That's about the review that you expect. Having been on these, yeah, it's it's loud, it's uncomfortable, uh, it it's just no, it's 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 no good. You you don't want a bus that has rail wheels on it. I mean, American track isn't as high quality as British. <laughs> don't track. say Britain. Yeah. Don't no no no. <laughs> it's uh, it, absolutely not. It's a little li- little bit rough. So I, I can't mm. imagine what the pacer was feeling on this. This track that hadn't seen a Just, train in two years. Yeah, the the whole sort of shitty British Leyland built defunded monocoque body just fucking shaking itself to pieces. <laughs> Just terrified. Would have been ten million dollar plan. Ten million dollar plan. Uh huh. Just filled with diesel fumes. Would have would have been mercy to run into another tanker truck. <laughs> <laughs> So it has spent the time since then languishing in a battle back lot at the Connecticut Trolley Museum with a bunch of other rusted out hulks. Um, and that is the story of the SEPTA Regional Rail meltdown yeah. from 79 to 1992. <laughs> and spare a thought for uh, rural english people who have to deal with this car that was so shitty that scepter which we've established was not good is not good took one look at it and was like no this isn't gonna this isn't gonna work (laughs) (laughs) that that's the only rail car that we have in large areas of our country it's awesome it sounds great. I'm pretty jealous, honestly. It, is it a tra- is it a train? <laughs> yeah. Is it a bus? <laughs> yeah, it's it's, it's, it's so close. nice to like see this thing just sort of coasting into the station and just sort of reverberating. It's wonderful. Oh, those places we discontinued service to. Uh, Allentown is now the fastest growing city in Pennsylvania. Um, mm. Newtown saw a lot of development in the same time period, mostly suburban garbage. Um, and you know, same same with Westchester uh, and Reading and all these places. Like it, it, there there was a lot of development that occurred right after the train was shut down. Hmm. And all of that, all of the logistics, all of the transport for that has to go to cars and maybe buses, right? Uh yeah. I mean, everyone loves taking the 125 bus out to King of mm. Prussia. You know. Can confirm. Yeah, <laughs> I uh, I had to commute on that for a while. So just as a quick aside, the 125 bus runs from Center City, Philadelphia, uh, to King of Prussia, which is about I think I'm correct to say about 20 miles away. Um, it is far and away the worst fucking bus I've ever taken. <laughs> uh, but what if? But what if you put it on two bogies and you put those bogies on a track that's been like systematically neglected? I and... see you're speaking about the Norristown High Speed Line, which, <laughs> which damn it, they are going to run out to King of Prussia no matter how much the mainline moms hate it. 
So I guess the conclusion we can draw from this is train good, but when funded well. Yes. Br- British train, not good. Not British good. train, very <laughs> bad. British train, bad. <laughs> do, do not <laughs> buy British train. It. Don't buy yeah. Pacers. Don't. No. I know, don't, I know don't you'll look it, at the Pacer it. and say, that looks like a good idea. No. Yeah, it's, oh, it's, it's, it's cute. <laughs> it and, and people have affection for it. No, it's, it's forged in trauma. We have Stockholm <laughs> Syndrome with this train. <laughs> Isn't there a Pacer Preservation Society now? Yes. Why? Yes, there is. <laughs> <laughs> Look, some people like steam trains. Some people like this. I, I don't claim to understand it. <sighs> There's no accounting for taste, but there no. really should be. Yes. And, and I guess another another uh, uh, thing we learned is, uh, you know, maybe your service improvement shouldn't be based on busting unions. Yeah, um, Maybe. You know, and, and maybe you shouldn't have 25 different unions for each guy who pushes the button and pushes another button. I think it's I think it's reasonable to say, okay, we're going to staff trains with fewer people, but run more trains, right? And still, mm-hmm. like, employ the same amount of people and pay them the same or even more, right? That's, you know, that's crew reform, right? Because uh, you don't strictly need the amount of people you need on the train right now to run every train. You don't need three conductors for a two-car train, right? Not with that attitude. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but if we're yeah, gonna... what's what's wrong with a good old-fashioned make-work job? <laughs> like, just have a sinecure, give people a uniform, and like have them walk up and down the train doing nothing. That's fine. What's wrong with that? <laughs> we can afford it. But uh, if we're gonna do if we're gonna do crew reform, don't do it in such a way that you're gonna tell everyone we're gonna pay you less. Also, a bunch of you are getting fired. You can use the same number of people differently. Yeah, no, no. There's there's one meaning of efficiency, and efficiency is when you uh, ruthlessly uh, dehumanize people and try to take away their livelihoods. Yes. It's it's not using the same amount of resources for more stuff. You have to cut the resources. Yes. Yes. Cost cutting first. The most important thing we can do. And on that note, uh. Next week we're doing the Tacoma Narrows Bridge disaster. Oh yeah. thank God. Uh, Excited. Yeah. I've yeah, been waiting for it's this. It's gonna be one. great, yeah. So that was the SEPTA Regional Rail Meltdown. Uh I'm Justin Rosniak. Also do not eat on the YouTubes and on the Twitter. Uh anyone got anything to plug before that we go? Mm, listen to Trash Future, my other podcast. That was that was it. That was that's yeah. the sole <laughs> effort the that I'm answer. putting into this. Yeah. <laughs> All right. On that note, I think, uh, are we good? I'm good. All right. All right. That's the end, everyone.